Ahoy there, I'm Captain Chris. Not a real captain, but I'm here to tell you about our cruise on P&O's newest and biggest ship, Arvia. And I hope this video will be interesting or useful to you if you're heading off on a cruise anytime soon, whether that's on Arvia or indeed on any other cruise ship. In this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the things you're definitely going to want to pack for your cruise holiday. And stay tuned until the end, because there's one thing that I needed on our recent cruise that I would have never thought of in a million years. It could be a matter of life or death. Now on any holiday, there are some things that you may want and some things that you definitely need. So let's start with the things you must have. Years ago, when my wife and I went on holiday, the last thing we would do before leaving the house would be to check our pockets and bags and say to ourselves, money, tickets, passports, money, tickets, passports. Passports, of course, are essential and your passport details can be registered with your cruise company before you travel. But I like to take a photocopy of ours as well. Some ports ask you to take photo ID with you when you're ashore and often a photocopy of your passport will suffice for this. And I'd rather take a photocopy than the real thing just in case I manage to lose one. Some people take other government ID instead like a driving licence which admittedly would be less of an immediate problem if you lost it than if you lost your passport. So think about this and decide what you're comfortable to carry. Cruise ships require you to register a credit card for your onboard account, and this can also be done before you leave home to save time on embarkation day. P&O only require one card to be registered for everyone in your party, so you don't necessarily need one each. You may also want to take some cash in the currencies used in the ports you're visiting and buying it before you leave may mean that you get a better exchange rate than you get if you were buying it on board the ship. The other essential that you need is of course your e-ticket but P&O now allow you to print your own boarding pass at home which serves both purposes. So our old mantra of money tickets passport is these days more accurately passports, credit card, boarding passes. Travel insurance is absolutely essential too. And again, I personally like to have a hard copy printed on paper, as well as the details that I can access from my phone, just in case I have a problem with my phone or lose it. And I would also have a hard copy of emergency contact information as well. So those are the things that you absolutely must have, but what about some of the other things that you need to remember to make your holiday run smoothly? Well, most of us these days are never more than a metre away from our mobile phones, so it's unlikely you were thinking of leaving yours at home, however nice the thought of a digital detox might sound in theory. But cruise lines are more and more making your mobile phone an essential part of your holiday by enabling you to book entertainment, uh, reserve dining, uh, queue virtually and check your onboard account through apps and web pages accessed on your mobile devices. You can do all that on P&O's Arvia even if you haven't paid for a Wi-Fi package. Then of course when you're ashore you can use all the features of a modern smartphone like maps, checking bus timetables, ordering taxis or Ubers and so on. Check out those roaming charges before you leave home though, so you won't be in for any nasty surprises once you get back. As well as your phones, remember your chargers and adapters too. On Arvia there are USB sockets under the bedside lamps, but you may want to make sure you've got everything you need with you. Incidentally, there were three British plug sockets in our cabin on Arvia. If you're thinking of taking any kind of extension lead, these must be non-surge protected and you should only charge devices in your cabin while you are present in the cabin yourself. Another thing to remember is to take any medication that you need and to make sure you've got enough to last the duration of your holiday. Also, a list of what your medication is could be useful if you do need to speak to a doctor whilst you're on board. But in addition to those, there are some other medical items that it might be wise to take with you in addition to your prescription meds like headache tablets and painkillers, seasickness tablets if you may be susceptible to that, uh, sticking plasters and antiseptic cream for any minor cuts and scrapes, mouth ulcer gel, diarrhoea medication could be welcome if the worst comes to the worst, and a face mask may be required, particularly in medical settings, like for example if you need to visit a pharmacy whilst ashore. 
Cruise ships have good medical centres on board if you need to consult a doctor, but they're not free. So having a few essential over-the-counter supplies could save you time and money. It's also worth knowing that there are no dental services on board. So if you were to crack a tooth or lose a filling, you won't find any help before you reach dry land. Consequently, we always carry an emergency dental repair kit with us, which enables you to do a running repair that might make life a lot more comfortable until proper help is at hand. Another thing that isn't easy to put right on a cruise holiday is a problem with your glasses. So if you sit on your readers on the first day, you'll be glad if you brought a spare pair, even if they're only from the pound shop. Think about what sort of things you'll need to get a good night's sleep. Earplugs and eye masks might come in handy, especially if you're visiting a part of the world that has long, long daylight hours. Another thing that might come in useful is a, a lanyard that you can keep your cruise card in. You can buy these on board, but they're probably cheaper if you get one before you leave home. You can pop your cruise card in it and it will always be to hand wherever you need it. Your cruise card acts as the key to your cabin. You use it for paying for everything on board and you also need it to leave and board the ship when you're in port. Uh, you can also buy a similar pouch to keep your mobile phone in. Something to remember when packing for your holiday is that your suitcases may take a few hours to arrive at your cabin on the first day. Because of this, make sure that you pack whatever you need on the first day in your hand luggage. Uh, medication, maybe a change of clothes, a few toiletries, and I'd be keeping valuables in my hand luggage rather than in my main suitcase. If you've not cruised before, it's worth mentioning how you get your suitcases back at the end of your holiday. Uh, they're collected from outside your cabin on the last day and then after you've disembarked the ship you go to a, a huge room where everybody's cases have been laid out together. Uh, they're laid out in deck order so you've got some idea where to look for yours but it's a chaotic few minutes I find with lots of people wandering around hundreds of suitcases all looking for the one that matters to them. It could be worth trying to make your suitcase stand out from the crowd by maybe attaching a colourful strap to it or something like that which might help you to spot it amongst the many hundreds of others. Now before I tell you about the thing that I needed on our last cruise that I would have never thought of, could I ask you if you found this video at all useful, would you please hit the subscribe button and allow notifications. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but it tells me that you're enjoying my content and it helps this channel to grow. So please subscribe, thank you. Now, on our most recent cruise, somebody unfortunately suffered a serious medical incident and needed an emergency blood transfusion. An announcement was made over the public address system that anyone who was a registered blood donor was asked to attend the scene to give blood but only if they had their blood donors card with them. My blood donors card happened to be in my wallet by luck. So I rushed along there to volunteer. When I got there, there were other people also volunteering, but many of them didn't have their donor card with them and had to be turned away. After enough blood had been collected, the rest of the volunteers were stood down. After this, the ship diverted to the coast of Spain where the casualty was taken to hospital. We were never told what became of this patient and quite right too, it's none of our business. But I wish them well and whatever their outcome, it could have ended very badly if no one had taken their blood donor's card. Wherever you go on your next cruise, I hope you have as great a time as we did. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and I'll see you again soon.